was it you observed? Because I mean, you were in Ethiopia, right? You slept on top of a volcano. Is that right? Yes. So we, we, our mission was to just see the world. We didn't have a lot of time, but I also am a big believer when you go to a country, try and see as much as you can, try and learn about the culture, learn about the, the language. If you can pick it up, that's great. Try and really immerse yourself in the entire experience rather than just flying in, going to the Bali mountains, looking for the wolf and then leaving again. So we decided to do a bit of a trip and we went to a place called the Danco Depression. Um, I've got some really great photos of it on my Instagram in case anybody's wondering, you're welcome to check that out. And uh, link Lauren, I'll go art with seven, I think. No, no, really, I don't know how to explain this place unless you Google it, I guess, the Danical Depression, and it's in the Horn of Africa, and it's where three tectonic plates have merged and therefore created a really unique landscape with volcanoes, but also the lowest point on Earth. So it's said to be the hottest, deadliest, and lowest place on Earth combined. The temperatures can reach up to 55 degrees Celsius, and there's no life. There's no wildlife, and it was so bizarre to see this, and... There's no flies, there's no insects, there's no butterflies, birds. There's no life, there's no vegetation. And it's just this hot, arid, sulfuric, volcanic desert. And you'll see from the photos, but it's, it's pink and yellow and orange and green. It's like someone's just painted it with neon colors from a sort of old school discotheque. And it's just the most bizarre place I've ever been. And during that experience, our guide said to us, there's an active volcano up there. And I said, yes, I can see that. There's smoke coming out of that volcano. Oh, we're going to climb it. And I thought, okay, that's cool. So it's getting darker and darker. The sunset, we're climbing up this volcano. It's getting harder to breathe the altitude and also the fumes coming from the volcano. And we get to the top and there's this enormous crater and you can actually just hear the lava. You can't hear one another because the lava is just churning and you can't actually look down. It's, it's almost like Lord of the Rings. And it's just this burning orange lava churning over inside. And you have to wear a mask and you take the necessary precautions. And our guide walked about 200 meters away and he said, we sleep here. What? Whoa. We sleep here. Yes. And it's, um, it's a mattress. It's a really thin mattress, no mask, no pillow, no duvet, no cover, just a camel farting the whole <laughs> night. And you're lying on a, uh, on a mattress, listening to the churning lava of an active volcano, a farting camel and the stars. And really, it was, it was surreal. I still pinch myself and think that that even happened. But Jess did. it. <laughs> That's incredible. Did you sleep? did actually you know my partner and I we just looked up at the stars and we thought this is amazing I really wish I could tell everyone to go to Ethiopia and do it oh, it's just we're sitting in the middle of nowhere and we kept getting asked where are you and I have no idea we're just in the middle of this place in Ethiopia called the Afar region and we're up a volcano and that's it I don't have any more knowledge and you know it was so adventurous and it was so last minute on a whim and it's just the best thing I've done in a long time. But the, the first time I came to Africa was in 1998, I think it was, 98. And um, I, I'd flown back from the Himalayas, from kayaking in the Himalayas. And on the, the map in the, uh, like, you know, you get the, the in-flight magazine sort of thing on the, in the seat in front of you. And yeah. you've got at the back, back of the magazine, they've got the, the map of the world and they've got all the different routes that they fly and some significant landmarks are, are identified. And, and they had a little blue line going from the centre centre of Africa north, which I later found out was called the Nile. Um, but that's a, that's a different story. Um, and, um, and I had some money and I had some time. So I bought myself a flight to uh, Entebbe in Uganda. Um, and thought, right, I'm going to take my kayak and I'm going to go and kayak this blue line for as far as I can. And then when I run out of time, I'll find a way to get back to the airport and, and fly back home. And um, so I told my mum and, you know, parents being generally more educated than I think I was about 21 at the time, something like that. <laughs> um, something like that. I can't remember 99. No, that would make me about 23. There we go. You know exactly how old I am now. Um, uh, 23. And my mum's like, but isn't there a civil war? I'm like, no, I don't know. Um, 
are you sure it's safe? Oh, I don't know. Um, but I tell you the thing that I found the most interesting, and this goes listening to you and listening to Kim um, as well, is I was terrified whilst kayaking down the White Nile then. So from uh, Jinja in Uganda along the White Nile, mm -hmm. I was terrified of crocodiles. And trust me, there is some big ass crocodiles. Oh, terrified of them. But hippos, they're so beautiful. They're like cute, aren't they? And so I've been, yeah, you look like that. That's how other people look when I tell this story. So I got, I've been up close, like within meters, like literally one or two meters of hippos taking pictures, then yawning, um, kayaked away, blissfully unaware of anything. But at night when I slept, I'm like crocodiles, crocodiles, cro that's all I thought about. And, um, and then on the, way, <laughs> on the way back, flying back from Entebbe back to the UK, I opened up the, not the same magazine, different airline, but the same magazine. And it had uh, Africa's 10 most deadliest mammals. And there you are. Um, apparently, hippo. <laughs> yeah, hippo number one. And crocodiles are quite safe, apparently. Um, yeah, completely. <laughs> but I think a lot of it's got to do with your, like ignorance is bliss, but equally a lot to do with attitude. If you're scared, the animals pick up on it. Um, and if you're not scared and you're comfortable, actually, they're quite comfortable with you. I agree with that to an extent, um, but we're still a human and we're still a threat to some animals. But yes, I do think if, you, if you're scared, animals can sense it for sure. But your hippos are incredibly dangerous and I don't think I would have done that. <laughs> right.